a New York best-selling author. We're gonna do the MythBuster quiz. How's that? New York best-selling author Laura Doyle how are you I'm great it's good to be here thanks for having me back thank you for being with us we're gonna get we're gonna keep it exciting we're gonna get into a quiz you do a quiz in your book You've been on, on many of the syndicated uh, mainstream uh, media outlets talking about you know the success that you've had we'll get into the science behind it I want to ask you about that but I want to make it fun here where people can participate wherever they're tuning in. If you're with your your beloved spouse, uh, angry spouse, whatever, and they're tuning in, and now they're going to take, uh, we're going to do the myth buster quiz. How's that? All right? True or, true or false? And now I'm going, to re I'm going to go ahead and ask the question that you had straight from your book, Empowered Wife. I'm going to ask the question and then give the right answer, and then you'll comment on it. How's that? Okay, so the first one we're getting into is now you guys at home. Now you're gonna be uh, don't cheating, all right? So you keep score on your own. I can't keep it for you. So true or false, all right? These are myth busters. I'm gonna ask the question, and then either it's true or false, and then tally it up and see who wins at the end. First one, you ready? All right, marriage is hard work. You guys got right now two seconds. You done? Okay. Answer is false, and you go ahead and comment. I've been married for 25 years. And my marriage is a soft place to land. Waitressing is hard work. Uh, writing a book is hard work. Uh, working out is hard work. But uh, uh, marriage is a piece of cake. And then you say, uh, now that I have the right skills. Key point here. Can you go ahead and take it from here? Absolutely. Before I learned the intimacy skills, my marriage did feel like hard work because we were bickering all the time. We were butting heads a lot. In fact, I, I was right on the brink of divorce. But if you think about it, if you gave a 16 year old the keys to the car because you said oh you're 16 now you're old enough to drive and you never had them take any driving lessons or learn the rules of the road they would probably crash the car too and they would go wow driving is really dangerous and they'd be right and so my relationship felt really hard just because I didn't have the right training but now is this is where I find out that I'm beautiful and special and wonderful and get hugs and kisses and bedroom lice so uh, it seems really easy now that I know the rules of the road. Yeah, you, you talk about that in your book. I mean, if you if you how many accidents will we have if you just like what you talk about, you threw the keys to the to the people driving. They didn't go through the classes, the rules of the road and, you know, how to be a responsible driver. And m m most people get into marriage, you know. Uh, and we don't have in, we don't have what you talk about, those necessary skills. Yeah, it's absolutely true. In fact, when I first learned about him, I was really kind of upset at my female relatives, you know, my moms and my grandmas, I mean, my mom and my grandmas, rather, because I thought, why didn't they just tell me this information? But sadly, I don't think they knew it either. I think it really is kind of a secret and that most people don't know the intimacy skills. That's why it's so important to me to make sure every woman has them, because I really suffered unnecessarily. Um, you know, when I was in college, there was no Relationships 101 class, and my textbooks were Cosmo magazine and Glamour magazine, and of course that didn't get me the kind of relationship that I dreamed of, the one that I have now. Yeah. Okay, so that's, you guys, uh, either you said true or false, you called that uh, uh, one of the myth busters, that it doesn't have to be, because that, that's another important thing. I mean, you, you come home and you've worked all day, and be it the husband or wife, you, you don't, that is, I mean, really draining psychologically. You could have had a long eight hour day, but now to be fighting and bickering, that becomes a lot of work, you know, managing all that stuff. So it shouldn't be like that, huh? And the six intimacy skills help to give you the skills to be able to make it where it's not like a full-time job. It's not that hard, strenuous. 
That's right. In fact, one of the things that we see a lot is that women will say, my husband's always working. All he does is spend his time at work. And sometimes it's because the husband just feels more successful at work. He feels like he's getting more positive reinforcement and more respect. And so that's a more appealing environment for him than being at home. And then once she starts using the six intimacy skills, I hear reports like, oh, he comes home from work early now just to spend time with me. So it can make a big difference. Yeah, you keep the man. Uh, many many people they end up at the pub or somewhere else. They don't want, people don't want to go home. <laughs> but now exactly. with these with these uh, uh, six these principles, intimacy skills, hopefully uh, we can get uh, things changed. God willing. Okay, moving on to next. It's the quiz now. Okay, straight from her book. Uh, we're gonna go to the next one. Husbands and wives have to give. Okay. Have you heard this one? Husbands and wives have to give and take equally for a marriage to succeed. Okay, now look at each other, false or true. What's your answer? And I'll give you the one, the correct one according to Laura Doyle. False. All right, and then you comment. The more women receive graciously from their husbands and focus on their own happiness, the more successful the marriage will be. Please elaborate on this. Well, around here, I'd say it's about 100 to 1 with my husband giving and um, providing and hugging and kissing and making my tea and putting gas in my car. Like, I do one thing and he gives me about 100 back. So it feels really uneven. And that was very awkward for me at first. I thought, because I had been trained that, first of all, marriage was hard work and that it was 50-50 or sometimes you hear people say it's 100, 100, everyone has to give 100%. And so I thought that that meant that I should buy my husband's socks and underwear and help him with his resume and show him how to dress and how to eat healthier and how to make a budget. And all of that was just causing distance. It was causing strife between us because what my husband really wanted was to, first of all, make me happy, which he does by doing all these wonderful things for me. And he also wanted my respect and admiration for all the things and the ways that he took care of me. And so it was much, it was such a relief to find out that that is a much better arrangement for both of us because I want to be taken care of and I want to feel desired and I'm happy to let him do that. And that's what he wants to do too. So it was a real eye opener for me. It was actually pretty shocking to find out that I don't have to keep up with all that he's doing for me. I like what you, you mentioned here, fo focusing when, when an individual focuses on their own happiness uh, instead of trying to make it dependent on someone else you highlight that it's, it's important that you focus on making yourself happy rather than leaving yourself powerless depending on someone else for that happiness yeah sadly I had gotten into this terrible rut where I was really concerned with the house cleaning and my job and um, all the paying all the bills and a lot of responsibilities and I had turned into a martyr you know my, my mother on her worst day where I just didn't have much happiness in my life. And I thought it was my husband's fault. I thought it was his job to make me happy. And even as I say that to you, it's kind of embarrassing. Like, where did I get that idea? Of course, that important job is mine. And when I focus on that job of making myself happy, that's when I become really attracted to my husband. I'm never hotter, all of us women, when I'm singing, dancing, smiling, laughing, then he just wants to pile on. He's like, wow, she's really happy. I'm gonna see what I can do to make her even happier. And so it, it's a, a virtuous cycle that just kind of takes us higher and higher. When I just take time out to do frivolous fun, I do at least three things a day as a policy every single day to make myself happy. And some days I need even more than that. Mm -hmm. So you're keeping yourself busy. You're not just waiting around saying, okay, I'm going to wait till he comes. He'll make me happy. <laughs> yeah. That, that is sadly what I was doing before. I'm yeah. embarrassed to say, but that's exactly what I did. And I see a lot of women get uh, stuck in this rut as well. I don't know how we get there, but the solution is to really, uh, like I make made a list of 20 things that make me ridiculously happy when I do them. Mm -hmm. And I just pick off of that list every day. Like, okay, I'm going to do at least these three that uh, are, are not necessarily productive things, right? right? Like they only serve to make me happy. Like maybe just having a cup of coffee with a friend or talking to my sister on the phone or playing volleyball or uh, singing at the top of my lungs, for example. All those things are just 
to make me feel good, but they serve my marriage magically. Mm -hmm. uh, that's only two. We're going to continue on with the quiz. We're going to continue having fun with this, but this is something serious. As, in, as you highlight, your mission is to help, uh, uh, and, you, and you mentioned this in your, your book, your, your exact words so I don't misquote them, is sharing, you know, and we're helping also to share that vision of, to end world divorce. I mean, I don't know if we'll get it 100%, but if we can get that number down, because it's happening every 13 seconds. Every 13 seconds, someone is getting divorced? Yeah, it's really tragic. And I just remember for myself when I was there and wanted to divorce my husband, how painful it was, and also now looking back, how unnecessary it was, because now I'm married to the man of my dreams. It's the same man. It's the same man. Okay, we're going to take a break. And, and when we're done with the quiz, I'm going to prove to you that there's science behind this, okay? Because it's all about science and whatnot. So this is not just her opinion. This has been tested. Thousands of people. You're an international uh, <coughs> coach on this, helping people from all thousands of, of women uh, get desired, cherished, loved, and adored. And it's a great success rate. We'll talk about that when we come back. we got to finish the quiz. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Allah, there's only one God and Muhammad is his messenger Allah, la ilaha illallah Allah, there's only one God and Jesus was his messenger Allah Back on the D Show with best-selling New York Times author Laura Doyle with the new book Empowered Wife, the empowered wife. Thank you again for being on the Dean Show. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Let, you ready to continue? Are you guys ready? You're ready. Continue with the quiz. We were at <coughs> number two. Let's go on to another one. Women have more. Okay, so this is, these are Mythbusters, true or false? Is it a reality or fantasy? False or fiction? True or false? Women have more influence than men on whether a relationship will be connected and fun or distant. Go ahead, think about it. True? You got it. That's what it is. Laura uh, uh, Doyle, she goes on to say, women are keepers of the relationship and have much power over the culture in the home. Please comment on this. Well, absolutely. If you think about it, from the time we start uh, the courtship, really, uh, men are asking women out, so we have a lot of power. It's almost like you're, let's say you're the director of the Broadway show. You get to say, okay, this dancer is in or that one's out. We're auditioning men for the role. So that's a very powerful position. And then it, it continues. As the relationship develops, we, we are the gatekeepers for uh, sex. And then it turns out that we also initiate the most divorce. Some studies show that it's as high as 90% among college-educated edu women where the woman has initiated the divorce. So the person who's willing to walk away, unfortunately, also has the most power in the relationship. And because men want to make us happy, you know, I've asked thousands of men this question. I'll say, how important is it to you that your wife is happy? In fact, let me ask you that question. Let's just, let's just get it on, on the table right here. How important is it to you? It's huge, yeah. It, yeah, and so all men say the same thing. They say, it's huge. I think huge. That's, across the board. that's across the board. It's across the board. I mean, you have, you have, you, you have, I mean, we're, 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 we're going for, it's like uh, uh, the standard, but, you know, you obviously have exceptions to every rule, but we're talking about the standard, right? You know? Well, of all the men I've asked, thousands of men that I've asked, they all said the same thing. They all said it's like the most important thing. It's everything. So it's there's, huge. have you had some oddballs out or it's pretty no, much 100 percent? I've never once had anyone say anything, any man say anything except in the UK they said it's imperative. It's so right. all over the world it seems to be the same thing. And so because men just want to make us happy, we have we hold the key. If we make ourselves happy, then he's happy and we're happy and then the relationship is happy. And it, it kind of stands to reason that only happy people have happy relationships. Well, why, she says, why isn't he then making me happy? If you uh, miss uh, Laura Doyle, you know, you seem to know it all. Why isn't he making me happy? <laughs> that is a great question. And that was 
See, I believe that my husband didn't care about my happiness early in the marriage. Have you had, have you had those situations where someone will get a little attitude and snippy with you and it just says, oh. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And rightly so. You know, I think that's the great thing about the intimacy skills. It's like test them out. See if they work for you. That's what I did at first, too. I just started experimenting in my marriage. But my husband couldn't make me happy for two reasons. One was that I was unpleasable. In fact, it's now... Uh, someone asked him recently, like, what's the number one quality you want in a wife? And he said, pleasability. He yeah. wanted to be able to please me, and I wasn't pleasable. Uh, no matter yeah. what he did, I found fault with it. Like, he would clean the kitchen, and I'd go, um, well, what about, you didn't wipe off the counters, so when Whoa. are you going to do that, right? There wasn't much appreciation. And the other piece was that he knew that I was not very respectful. I didn't think very highly of my husband. I felt that I was the smarter one. I had this superiority complex I thought my gosh I'm just a little I have a little more common sense than he does and I'm just a little better at practically everything because I like having things my way and um, I'm not proud to say that because uh, and through this journey I've gained some humility I'm happy to say and I didn't even understand why I would want that before I didn't I didn't know why you would want to be humble uh, and now I can appreciate oh I'll give you an example it's just happened we we're getting ready for our tax appointment and the previous tax year, we had put in new windows and air conditioning. And um, my husband's kind of famous for like, that's a tax deduction, you know, and I'm always like, oh no, you know, how is that a tax deduction? And he said, well, we make all of your videos here in the house and the windows helped us soundproof the house and the air conditioning made it so we can tape on hot days without you, you know, dripping with sweat, which happens uh, where we live now sometimes. So um, after he explained it, I was like, oh, it, it, maybe that is it. I mean, I don't know. We, we brought it to the CPA and he'll figure it out, but I don't always know. I'm not the big smarty pants that I thought that I was. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Uh, that really um, is, I like what you said. You said uh, unpleasable. I mean, I've, I've had people say that, look, no matter what I try, there's no pleasing this person. Uh, so uh, this is really profound. Let's move on to number, that was three, right? How you guys doing now? Okay. See at the end, you'll be able to tally it up and see uh, uh, who won the quiz. Let's move on to number four. A happy wife is often willing to have s intimate relations with her husband, even if she is not in the mood. True or false, guys? True or false? True. And Laura Doyle comments on this. Why would you want to pass up the opportunity to feel desired? To feel pleasure and to connect with your husband physically, emotionally, and sp spiritually. Just because you don't start out in the mood doesn't mean you won't end up there. Please uh, comment on this. Well, because my husband just wants to make me happy, and this also applies in the bedroom, and one of the things that I wasn't very good at in my early relationship was saying what I wanted. And just even knowing what I wanted was kind of a problem mm. at first. And so I think what happens, so for, for the women who are listening thinking, ew, oh my gosh, you know, he'd want it every day, twice a day, or I'd never, you know, we'd never stop, um, you, you know, we'd be in bed all the time. So of course you are always in charge of your own body. You always get to say what's right for you. But I just know that um, this part that happens in the bedroom is what differentiates uh, a romantic relationship from every other relationship that you have. You might snuggle with your kids and you might share things that are really emotionally sensitive with your sister or your friends, but the one thing that separates a marriage and makes it special is this physical relationship that we have. So it's something that uh, when it goes missing does um, some irreparable harm to the emotional connection as well as you're passing up this opportunity to have amazing physical pleasure and just connection. So if it's not that enjoyable for you, if it feels like a chore right now, then I just invite you to consider the things that would make it more pleasurable for you. And then you can say those things to him outside the bedroom. You could be out for a walk or having dinner and you could be having this really uh, sensual conversation about what pleases you and how, it, how you would be delighted. And he is taking notes on that. He is like, aha, okay, now I know what my wife really likes. And so as you go along and continue to express those desires and then reinforce him when he's successful with it, the whole, uh, that aspect of your relationship can really um, become so much more satisfying and gratifying.
Okay, that was number four. Let's move on to number five. You talk about here, so this is true or false. We're busting the myths. If something your husband is doing, if it's bothering you, it's best to be honest and to say it directly. All right, something's bothering you, just tell them, let them know what it is. Is this true or false? And you say in your book, Empowered Wife, false. You actually say it's false. You don't have to suffer indefinitely, but criticism has a chilling effect on intimacy, and there's always a better way to get what you want. Please explain explain this answer to us. Well, so 99.9% .9 of the time when my husband's getting on my very last nerve, and I just want to tell him to knock that off, if he's talking on the phone loud, or if he's chewing with his mouth open or something like that, it really is a reflection of my own self-care that's gone lacking. I, I'm on edge already. Maybe I need a nap or maybe I need to go for a walk. I need to do something to make myself happy because, of course, my husband's a mere mortal man. Once in a while, he's going to do something that could be irritating. And for the most part, when I make myself happy, it's absolutely, I don't care. It's no big deal. Like, I'm, I'm busy doing my thing and I'm not really focused on the minute details of what my husband's doing. So it's almost always a sign. And I'll ask my clients. My clients will come on the, the call and say, oh, my husband, um, you know, let the, let the kids eat sugar and stay in their pajamas and watch cartoons all morning. You know, he's, I can't even trust him as a parent. And I'll say something like, yeah, how's your self-care? And she'll be like, oh, my gosh, I haven't had any. I'm exhausted. I'm overwhelmed. I'm overworked. There's too much to do. And then when we set that right, all of a sudden, her husband goes back to being this great guy that she married. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was five. Was that five? We were at five. We're going to take a few more and just giving you a taste of what's in this, this book. And uh, we'll get into the science behind it and a few more things on this exciting episode with Laura Doyle, best-selling New York Times author here on The Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. Allah, there's only one God and Muhammad is his messenger Allah, la ilaha illallah Allah, there's only one God and Jesus was his messenger Allah Welcome back to The Dean Show. I'm with Laura Doyle, the empowered wife. Okay. Hope you guys are having fun. We're having a nice quiz. And these are, I'm just, we're giving you a taste of what's in the book. Much of benefit. But as uh, Wayne Dyer once said, I don't know if you know about him, uh, he said either for the mind to work, it has to be functioning like a parachute. It has to be open. And this is extremely important. I, I understand, you know, if you just came on and you're giving your opinion because of, you know, your experience maybe in just uh, one or two relationships. But you have been an international relation coach for how long now? Uh, 18 years. Whoa, 18 years. Okay, so 18 years. It's not someone who, okay, maybe uh, you, you were in and out of a marriage. You divorced two, three times. And someone said, hey, look, and now she made it work. No, you were about to divorce. You, were, you acquired the skills. You saved your marriage. And in the last program we did, you can go and watch it on our channel. Uh, we talk about the fallacy now, the myth also, and about uh, how marriage, traditional marriage counseling actually does more harm than good. And you went through that. You talk about it in your book, right? Which most yeah. people, they think, okay, you go to the, to the marriage counselor and then it's just like a, uh, a bashing fest. Can you, can you touch upon this before we get to the next uh, sure. quiz question? Sure. Yeah, there were a lot of problems there. So I, I dragged my husband to marriage counseling because I wanted her to fix him so he would be a good husband so I could finally be happy because that's how I thought it worked. And of course, that's not how it works. But it is a hideout for hypocrites, if I'm honest. A lot of us don't go. I wasn't trying to self-examine. I was just wanting her to fix that guy over there. That's never going to work. But the other problem was spending an hour a week complaining about each other never made any couple happier. And it certainly didn't work for us. And then the other problem was that because respect is like oxygen for husbands, would you agree? Respect is pretty important? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Yeah. So the first thing that we did Absolutely. was I sat in front of this stranger, this therapist, and told her everything that was wrong with my husband. And there's really nothing more disrespectful I could have done 
than to rip him apart in front of this stranger. So I actually dug my hole a lot deeper that day, made him more defensive and distant, which was the opposite of what I really was trying to accomplish, which was to feel um, playful and connected and restore the passion in my relationship. So just for those three reasons alone, there's more, but those are the top three reasons that marriage counseling actually does more harm than good. Mm -hmm. And the tragedy is I didn't know there were any alternatives to marriage counseling. I don't know that there were many alternatives to marriage counseling when we were going. And we went for years, we spent thousands of dollars, and all it did was um, put us further into the ditch. Mm -hmm. Why do you think uh, nowadays, when we go more back, I I don't see it where it was like this. Uh, Does the culture, the society today, you kind of, you kind of, uh, you go away from what you just said, the R word, respect. It's like uh, people, they've written songs about it. You know, you you mentioned um, that one comedian, like I can't get no respect. I remember we talked about that. But sometimes it's like as soon as even a man says that, even though he's hot wired like that, it's kind of like, it it seems like he's saying something demeaning, something wrong. Like he, he... yeah, and this is, I think, goes back to the differences between men and women. So there was definitely um, a big faction of society that was trying to say, hey, men and women are the same. We're identical. And I was one of those people. i get mad if someone said that men or women are different because I thought, well, that means women are going to lose in the workplace. We need to be equal in order to succeed. And that's just not true. Now I can appreciate that I have feminine gifts that the world needs and my relationship needs and that I value I didn't even know what those were. But when you look at the word respect through a feminine brain, a lot of times we think of it as something you're obligated to give, like to a parent or a teacher or a boss. And um, so it's been a journey for me to really understand what respect looks like to my husband and appreciate it. I used to think I was being respectful if I let him know where I was or I didn't leave a mess. And that had nothing to do with respect for him. For him, it was respectful when I didn't second guess him or try to control him or try to improve him. And I didn't always have to agree with his thinking, but I honor his thinking. And I can do that by using this magical three word phrase that I rely heavily on these days. And that phrase is, I hear you. I hear you. It's just three words, but it lets him know I'm not agreeing, I'm not disagreeing. But I'm bearing witness. You know, what you say is important to me. I'm taking it on board. I'm giving it consideration. I'm giving it airtime. And that's because I respect you. So that's one great in fact I actually use that phrase with almost everybody I talk to now, my my sisters and you know, my friends and the people on my team, because everyone loves to feel heard and understood. Yeah. I like that. I hear you. <laughs> Real se- these are like there these are the skills you talk about, techniques. And I know as a martial artist, I mean, you can really be exerting a lot of strength if you don't have the proper technique. I could be going at it with a really strong big guy, and he's much stronger, bigger. Let's say he weighs 100 pounds more than me. But now if I have the proper technique, I can use science now, leverage and technique to overpower this person. Same thing here. You can apply the the techniques now that you're providing, you know, and through years, 18, was it 18 years, you said, of dealing with, you know, helping people to avoid divorce and implementing these techniques and then having the profound results that you're seeing is truly amazing. Let's go on to, I believe this is uh, number five. We're going, we're going to, we're going to, there's a lot more. We're just going to do a a couple more marriages. Now, true or false? You guys are keeping score. No cheating, okay? So as soon as I read it, one will say true, one will say false. And then you can tally up in your mind, write it down and see who won at the end. Marriages where the wife is feminine. Soft. And the husband is masculine. Are highly successful. What do you guys say? True or false? True or false? And the answer is true. And you mentioned yin and yang go together beautifully. Please elaborate on this. Well, I think there's been this trend towards like men have to be more sensitive or whatever. And women have to go out and just, you know, kill it out in the world as far as being, uh, you know, the boss lady at work, you know, really kick some butt out there. And um, for me, I know when I really get down to it, if I'm really honest, One of the most important things to me is to feel desired and and to feel loved 
those are so important to me. And what my husband is really attracted to is my feminine mind, body, and spirit. And so the more uh, receptive I am, that's the essence of femininity, by the way, is receptivity. Mm -hmm. So when I'm willing to accept his gifts and compliments and his help, and not just from him, but like from anybody, from everybody in the world, um, that makes me so much more attractive. And then what I'm attracted to about him is his manliness. You know, there's times when I'll, I, and, and it's kind of funny because it, it's such the opposite of feminine that it looks really strange sometimes. And yet I'm all like, you know what? That's hot. Like he's acting really manly right now, even though. Uh, and, and so, and what does that look like? He's like decisive. He's taking initiative, right? He's accomplishing things in the world. That's, that's super uh, exciting for me. And so the way to keep that excitement, that exhilaration in marriage alive is to set those gender contrasts to high. And the way I can do that is by showing up really feminine in my relationship. Now, it doesn't take away from my success in the world. I'm, I'm a New York Times bestselling author, and this book, The Empowered Wife, has been made into a, a TV series on Amazon, and I, I do lots of media. I've got an international coaching company. Um, so I'm also uh, I'm lifted up much higher than I would be if I didn't have this inner strength that I get from this masculine, feminine contrast in my marriage. Uh, I don't know if you've heard the the expression, uh, no man wants uh, another man in the house. Where, you know, exhibiting what you're, is, is this correct what you're saying to translate feminine to being soft, to exhibit those, 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 those really, uh, qu those gifted qualities that, that a woman by her creator has been blessed with to exhibit more of those, that soft nature, right? She can melt a man away with that, right? Absolutely. There's, there's five gifts of the feminine. Um, one is our magnetism, um, our desires, because that's so much the directional for our husbands, right? They're like, what does she want? Okay, boom, that's the direction we're going, right? That's how he knows what to do and what, what actions to pursue. Um, and then, as I mentioned, receptivity is the essence of femininity. But desire is the seat of feminine power. Like the more you know what you desire and you can honor that and express it clearly. Oh my gosh, I mean, women can move mountains without yeah. moving a muscle. Wow, they know yeah. what their desires are, right? I mean, our men get really inspired to uh, fulfill on those when they know what they are. Yeah, she. Uh, I, I, there's cases where women just with her with her luxuries to her husband, her voice, It's it's it, it, she projects it uh, in two different scenarios, two different ways, and one can just just uh, render him unconscious, and in another way, you know, yeah. the other way she, she can just melt him, you know, in in, in 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 a way that only a woman can do to her husband. So it's you know yeah, these are those yeah. gifts; they're really powerful. Yeah, uh, one of the things that you know I created with the six intimacy skills is I, I call them cheat phrases that help you get into that that mode, right? You you use this phrase, and that's going to connect you to your vulnerability, for instance, which is, that's another feminine gift, is our emotional brilliance. And men kind of rely on us uh, to bring that vulnerability. That's the part of the uh, fascination that creates lasting commitment is comes from our vulnerability. And so it's just, uh, it's pretty magic to use these phrases and have them kind of naturally pull you into that mode. And then you see your, you, know, you see that look on your husband's face, right? I just, you know, I just remember when I started practicing the skills, one time I came through the door and his face lit up to see me and I just knew like, wow, this is working. And uh, that's a lot of what we do with the, the intimacy skills is just use those phrases that put us into that mode. Brilliant. Uh, next one. Most people get divorced, true or false. Most people who get divorced are happier within a few years than they were when they were unhappily married. Okay, so true or false. What do you guys have to say? And Laura Doyle tells us false studies. She says studies show that people are just as unhappy after they divorce as they were in difficult in a difficult marriage. Please elaborate on this. Well, it kind of stands to reason that happiness is a personal responsibility. And so for me, I made it about my husband that I was unhappy because he was right there and I saw him all the time. So I kind of connected these dots falsely. Like I'm unhappy because of him. Well, I was unhappy because of me, sadly. And if I had divorced him, I can look back now and it seems really obvious that I probably would have found somebody else and gone through the same exact pattern 
or I would have been alone and unhappy just because that's that was what I was used to that was my habit so it really uh, took some enormous effort in the beginning took some focus to make myself happy and then of course that went a long way towards making my relationship happy along with the other intimacy skills but you can't expect to get happy. It's it's a fantasy that someone else's actions or presence has to do with your happiness, right? We are all, you can be happy in any circumstance. Uh, and that sounds nice to say, but how, how powerful is it to start practicing that where you are right now in this moment in, in whatever state your marriage is in? Let's, uh, we're almost uh, finished here. Let's get a couple more and we're done. With the quiz, exciting to t be able to take this quiz. It's right out of her book, and it really has you thinking. And you've probably heard a lot, a lot of these different statements. For a marriage to improve, both people have to work on it. So for a marriage to improve, I, I know I've heard this so many times. Uh, for a marriage to improve, both people have to work on it. True or false? According to empowered wife Laura Doyle, false. Women have far, far more power in the relationship, pay attention here, and therefore have the ability to revitalize the intimacy of a marriage single-handedly. That's like your definition of a superwoman. Men rise to the occasion, but women set the tone. People are like, what are you talking about? Please elaborate on this. Absolutely. So what we see over and over again, what I've had the honor of witnessing thousands of times now, is a wife gets her hands on the intimacy skills. She doesn't even say to her husband, hey, I'm practicing these intimacy skills. He doesn't even know she's doing anything. And she'll say in about two weeks, she's like, I feel like I have a new husband. He's so thoughtful. He's so considerate. He held my hand in the car for the first time in 10 years. You know, or, uh, I, I mean, and we can start with situations that are, very dire, where maybe they've been estranged for years, living under the same roof, but sleeping in separate bedrooms, or maybe the divorce has already started, or sometimes there's an affair going on. It's amazing what she can do by herself. So this was something I bought into too, right? I thought I was hopelessly stuck, waiting for my husband to improve himself, and I told him how to improve himself, and he wouldn't do it. So I was trapped, but empowerment wears a disguise. And that disguise is accountability, really taking responsibility mm -hmm. for what you're bringing to the party in your marriage. And for me, this was such good news because it was so important to me to have a wonderful relationship. I, I wanted that more than anything. It's like that old song, right? The, the greatest thing you'll ever learn is just to love and be loved in return. Mm -hmm. And this is important to a lot of women. So it's great news. We have the power to make our relationships Intimate, passionate, and playful. And who doesn't want that? Yeah, and uh, you're, you're, you're throwing this power away by not using it correctly. I mean, I think that it's brilliant. Uh, and well, it's not your fault, right? If no one ever showed yeah. her, the if no one ever trained you, how are you supposed to know? Like, you wouldn't know how to make an omelet or play the piano. You, yeah. know, you wouldn't sit down at the piano and go, gosh, I hope I'm good at this. So it's not your fault if no one ever showed you the skills. Tell, tell me, um, now I wanted to touch upon... Before we conclude, I mentioned science. You know, science now through empirical observation, you, this is, this is science now. Science is where you have tested, it's not just to one geographical location, is it? It's not just here in the United States, no? Uh, no. no. We're in 19 languages in 30 countries. What? what? How, How many languages? Yeah. 19? <laughs> letters from women in Japan, like handwritten notes, you saved my marriage, or in Egypt they wrote and said, um, we thought only Egyptian men were the way you're describing, you know. So it's surprising to hear an American author say these things. And um, a, an author from Germany flew here to study with me because what I said resonated so much with her experience. So we're just uh, in Israel. Uh, we have amazing following there. And then, yeah. I'm so truly international from all over. So this is tested. This is not just a theory. This is in practicality. Thousands of people have benefited from this by implementing it, by being open-minded and trying it. Okay, you tried it that way, your way, okay? But you can't have the you know relationship function on Burger King, have it your way all the time. Uh, if somebody is giving you the skills that are proven effective, and that's the science behind it because it's actually working for these people, why not try it? You'd be a fool if you didn't. Yeah, this is definitely proven in oh, like lots of different languages. Uh, all over the world, and women from a variety of faiths, 
Um, you know, I've been so honored to be invited into uh, Muslim circles with, you know, women uh, of that faith who say this matches exactly uh, what we're taught in our faith, but it explains uh, how to do it. So I, I, I was I was very touched by that. It was very moving to hear that. that I, can, I can substantiate that because there is a strong emphasis in, in Islam. Every The roles are, you know, the woman is, is given such a high standard. That she's given, uh, she's honored so much there, and she's the man has a role, the woman has a role. But I like what you, what she actually said. You explain it, and any Muslim reading this say, "Wow, this is this Islamic concept. It's there." But it, it's your Laura Doyle's explaining it. It's amazing. I mean, uh, tell us uh, the NET. You call it needless emotional turmoil. Can you elaborate on that? Sure. So I spend a lot of time in my, anytime I'm trying to control someone outside of me, someone I can't control, it causes a, a needless emotional turmoil, and I call it NET, net for short. So I'll be like, oh my gosh, I'm having a lot of net, and that's like a string I can pull to figure out, like, wait, where did I get off of my side of the street? You know, I call it my paper, right? My papers where all my decisions and choices and my attitudes are that I can control. My husband has his own paper, and anytime I try to jump onto his paper, it's just likely to be exhausting. And you know what was really fascinating about this, too, is that when I stopped um, trying to be like the armchair quarterback of my husband's life, and <laughs> what did you say, our armchair quarterback? That's funny. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Funny. I was sitting in my chair going, yeah, you shouldn't have done that, or uh. hey, you wouldn't want to do that. Yeah, I mean, I stopped doing that. You know, my life emerged. Then I got to write these books and go on shows and speak live in front of a live audience of hundreds of people, which, you know what, it was terrifying. Mm -hmm. I was trying to avoid that because I was too scared to do it. And so, so much of the journey has just been about finding the courage, finding my faith, you know, becoming a woman of faith who trusts um, not just in my husband, but really in something much bigger than that. Uh, do you cover in your book also um, helping people gain emotional stability? Because one thing is these things are logical, it makes sense, but sometimes emotions can overtake someone, emotional stability. Uh, yeah. Do you cover anything in, in your book on that? Right. So for me, um, and I, I went through a, a whole period of uh, kind of being focused on these disorders, mental disorders uh, that are in the like diagnostic and statistical manual. So I was diagnosed with depression and I kind of had my husband diagnosed with attention deficit disorder. So we definitely had some uh, breakdowns along those lines. And I was, I was on medication and so was he. Uh, I was oh, so you, so you, you, they, they, they diagnose, they give out those diagnoses. It's really easy in the medications. It's fast. It's just like, yeah. like candy. Yeah. Right, here you go. Oh, man. <laughs> and I remember um, my therapist wasn't qualified to diagnose this, but she told us, go over here and you can, you can get that diagnosis. Yeah. So she was telling us, oh yeah, you guys have this. So you got to go get treated for it. Well, neither of us is on medication now. I don't have depression. He doesn't seem to have ADD. He's a very successful businessman now. So um, the the emotional issues were just bad habits. They were just this road that I went down because I didn't know any other options. And as soon as I learned that I had some other choices, um, and, and not to say, uh, I mean, I'm so grateful now that this, these are my new habits, and they kind of carry me along. And at first, it really had to, like, one of the, the chief phrases that we use is the word ouch, right? So I used to think, if you have a good marriage, your husband would never hurt your feelings. And that is just not true. When you live so close together, he doesn't mean to. He never intends to hurt my feelings. But sometimes we're teasing each other or whatever. Sometimes somebody's impatient, whatever. He hurts my feelings. And so I thought, well, that means my marriage is uh, broken and hopeless. But now I just know, if I just let him know, and I just can use this one word, I'll just say, ouch. And I'm not accusing him of anything. I'm not saying anything. But my husband just immediately reacts. And I see husbands all over the world do this, too, where he's like, oh, oh, my gosh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings or, you know, I shouldn't have said that or, uh, you know. He, he apologizes right away. It's kind of a miracle, really. It seems like I, that's what I always wanted him to do before, and he never would do it. And now he's really quick to apologize. So just taking that vulnerable approach uh, and keeping the connection alive by um, just honoring what's true for me has been really powerful and magical. Uh, why do you you have this? And I and I, I figured this out. But for someone who 
um, it's a such a powerful quote, and I and I think about it's really sad that you know you get these diagnoses and you go through spending all this money on the the conventional way, and at the end you just you hit a dead end. And some people there's a there's a a, a profound you know really intelligent uh, doctor Brogan uh, Kelly Brogan who talks about this. She's more of a holistic now psychiatrist. She used to go prescribing these drugs and giving these diagnoses. She stopped. She saw I'm not helping people. I'm actually making people more sick. She helps people get off these drugs and she she talks she talks about you know all of the negative side effects from people on these drugs and people end up becoming psychotic and many killing themselves or whatnot i mean thank god you didn't you didn't end up you know going down that route but so many people it's it's an epidemic people they get these diagnoses now they're crippled by that they feel like there's no hope for me they're stuck but then exactly true yeah, yeah i mean I, I found it very alluring because I thought, okay, this is going to be the solution, right? I'm in a lot of pain, and this is going to help, and it, it really didn't help. And anyway, then I had a story where I, I'm depressed, and my husband's got this disorder, a deficit disorder. I mean, is that a label anybody wants to carry around with them? It's yeah. not a good thing to focus on. What you focus on increases. So we absolutely had that experience of it just making things worse. And I, I just didn't know that there was an alternative, you know, that I could practice these skills, that they'd be so simple. Like, any woman can do them where, I, you know, none of that would have mattered. It doesn't matter to me at all anymore. I never think about depression or attention deficit disorder. And uh, we see the same thing with, a, you know, one of, the, one of the hilarious things is a therapist once told me that Every time she reads a woman the symptoms of Asperger's, every single time, she go, oh my gosh, my husband has that. Now, Asperger's is not even something that people uh, diagnose anymore. They yeah. have the autistic spectrum or whatever. Uh -huh. But um, because she said that, my husband and I sat down and read the description, and we're like, oh my gosh, my husband has that. <laughs> like, so I was like, I have that. I'm like, yeah, you do. So it might just be that some of these uh, things that we're calling disorders or syndromes or deficits are just part of the differences in the genders and that is part of what makes life exciting and makes relationships interesting and exhilarating i mean we're all the same it'd be pretty boring yeah i i'm i'm really enjoying uh uh getting all this uh great data from you and 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 having you on the program i i know we got to cut it uh, um curtail it in a uh, few i just i want to get a couple more things in the someone mentions he says uh in in your book, do you cover this uh, the the um, the good about bringing up someone keeps bringing up the past? If someone just keeps on like every time you know you're moving forward, and then someone just starts bringing things up from yesterday, a year ago, a week ago, ten years ago. I mean, uh, is 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 uh, revisiting this kind of history good for the relationship? <laughs> In fairness, I just want to say. This is how we were all trained, right? That is what therapy is all about. Let's go back to your childhood. Let's go back to the past. <laughs> so I have to figure that out, and that's going to solve things, right? So this is where we all got that idea. And no, absolutely not. It's not It's not how, if what I'm doing is digging up old resentments or old hurts, of course, that's not going to serve me because that becomes now my focus, right? That becomes like the headline of our situations. Like, oh my gosh, you once insulted me in front of my family or whatever is true um, versus like wow just this morning you um, you took me out to breakfast and you know we went for a walk hand in hand like um, and you, you're working hard to support our family and you cleaned the kitchen right like if I focus on those things my husband just automatically seems like my hero and if I'm focused on his mistakes I mean no husband's going to be perfect but my husband is perfect for me yeah, if that's been dead and buried, why it's like digging up the dead? Why are you doing that? It <laughs> yeah, why are you doing it? Yeah. yeah. In fact, um, a lot of women when they arrive at our campus, that is what they say. They go, "Well, I had this abuse in my childhood, or this what happened to me, and that." And it's sad, you know. I, I, sad, I feel yeah. for them having to go through that. But one of my the first things I say is like, "Yeah, I don't care about any of that." You know, good news. We're just going to learn some skills over here, and that's going to uh, that's going to really uh, alleviate a lot of the pain that you're feeling that you think is related to these past incidents. You know, if you think about like a teenager who's trying to get a job, we don't say to him, 
person. Well, maybe the reason you're not getting a job is because of what happened when you were eight. Let's talk about when you were eight. You know, you would say, "Hey, let's help you write a resume. Let's help you uh, get yeah. some interview skills. Let's get you in front of some potential employers." Right? We wouldn't say like, you know, maybe when you're eight and you crashed your bike, you know, that you're afraid to get a job or so. Right? It's like it's kind of silly when you look at it that way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. How can people get the book? Empowered uh, wife. Where can people get the book? Well, it's everywhere, but you can read a free chapter of it on getcherished.com. That's what most women want is to get cherished, and that's what it's going to do. But we also have something fun going on right now. It's the Get Cherished Challenge where I'll send you a, a little experiment to try in your marriage every day for five days. You can try one of the little cheap phrases to see how it works for you, see if you want to keep it. Or if it doesn't work for you, of course, you can throw it out, but... We find they are uh, very effective for women all over the world. So uh, at GetCherished.com, you can do all that. We had such a great response uh, last time for your, for your previous show you did. Uh, people are asking, when are you going to do If you haven't already, have it on audio. On, have the book on, yes. on, on, on audio, audio book. Yes. So, is that in the plan? Are you going to do anything like that? <laughs> yeah, this book actually is on audio. This, this one's, one's on audio. audio. It, it's on audio, but it's under a different title, uh -huh. and the title is called First Kill All the Marriage Counselors." Okay, so, we, and so you can listen, listen to it on audio also. Where where on audio? Is it on uh, Kind? What is it's it? It's on Audible. Audible, Audible. 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 You can get it on Audible? You can totally get it on Audible, yes. Okay, okay. and if um, if someone wants to become people in the communities, they, they want to empower uh, the people in their communities uh, with this information, they want to become a coach now, right? Like you are. Yeah. How can they? How can they also get involved and do be a coach, a a, uh, a marriage uh, coach? What, what do you call oh, it? A, what, we what, call what, them relationship. Relationship, relationship coach. How do they become relationship coaches? coaches. Yeah, yeah. Lord will. Um, Certified Relationship Coaches. We uh, do offer coach training periodically, so just reach out to me. You can write to me at laura at lauradoyle.org if you're called to be a coach. Um, some special women are attracted to this. Amazing women are attracted to uh, spreading this message and getting the skills out, especially in their community. And um, so we, we always love that. I always love to hear from women who are passionate about that, like I am. This is my mission to end world divorce, and if that mission calls to you too, I definitely want to hear from you. Thank you so much, you guys, Empowered Wife. Get the book. I want to thank you so much. It was a pleasure last time and this time. And thank you for the wonderful card. Thank you so much. God bless you. I really appreciate the work that you're doing and the community does. We really, you know, if you guys want to, are you also visiting places? People can get you to come to their communities. They can also get a hold of you there to bring you out. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Wonderful. Yeah, I would love to to come and be uh, where there's a group of women anytime. Um, you know, I was really flattered I got invited to speak locally to uh, like a, a group of Muslim women and it was standing room only and I just felt like a rock star. And if anybody uh, wants me to come there, gosh, I, I, would, I would be honored. Guys, you heard that. Empower, empower the women, empower the community. Get her to your community and let us know and we'll help promote it. I, will, I want to thank you again. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. You've been so wonderful to me. I can't thank you enough. God bless you. Thank you.